Once you open up your box from Two Stick Shadows, go ahead and take out all of the contents inside. You will see a set of acrylic paints, some paint brushes, and then of course all of your canvases. And you will also see the guide image as well as a set of instructions. The acrylic paint set has 24 tubes of paint. You'll have two whites, and then you will have three paint brushes, one flat and two different sizes of rounds. I highly recommend taking a look through the instructions. There are tons of helpful tips that will help you through this painting process. There are guide images for each of the canvases, but it's really up to you how close you want to make it to the original. To set up my workspace, I have my canvas, guide image, paint brushes, I have my set of paints, paper towel to clean off and dry off my paint brushes, a cup of water, and then for my palette, I'm just using a piece of disposable palette paper. I've decided that I'm going to keep my painting pretty close to the original, although I'll put my own spin on it as well. So typically when I'm painting, I like to begin with the darker values and then work my way to the middle values and then to the lighter values. Now it is painting of course, so you can be loose. You don't have to be super rigid and follow an exact specific formula, but generally speaking, that's how I like to paint. And because there's not a ton of depth and background um, as like a landscape in this particular image, I wouldn't necessarily feel the need to work from background to foreground. Instead, I'm going to really focus on the values and I can sort of paint some of the background as I paint the vase and the flowers because they share similar values. It's important to keep in mind that acrylic paint is made to be layered. So as we are moving around our canvas, we're going to build up layers, allow layers to dry. Sometimes we'll want layers to be wet so we can create more of a blend where sometimes we want those layers to sit on top and be dry. Notice how in this flower there are all these tiny little lines and details. That kind of stuff I save for last. I focus on the big shapes of colors first, again working dark to light, and then I finish with all those little tiny details. So to get started, I am going to focus on the dark values as I previously mentioned. So I'm going to lay out some black and some of the different blues onto my piece of palette paper so that I can start to set up my palette. I definitely like to put a variety of colors on my palette because I often mix kind of as I paint and especially with acrylic paint that it dries so fast it's not that you want to pre-mix a whole bunch of colors necessarily but I find it's helpful to have just little bits of color that I can kind of keep pulling from and then I just kind of mix as I go. So now that I have some colors to start with, I am going to pull some uh, black, a little bit of white, and I'm going to start to block in some of these dark values. So when I say block in, I'm just referring to just painting the shapes with the color that I see them. Keep in mind, you're going to overlap your paint at times because it appears very layered. So keep in mind we have to begin with the background layer and then we can continue to add layers on top. Wet acrylic paint on top of wet acrylic paint is going to blend. So sometimes when I'm painting, I actually like to let the paint mix a little bit on the canvas instead of mixing it on my palette. So it's something to experiment with. Whereas if you have wet paint, let it dry, so it becomes dry paint of course, and then you take 
more wet paint and paint it on top of that dry paint, it's going to sit on top and appear more layered. So it's just important to keep in mind the different dry times and consistencies. So sometimes you want to lay down a layer, wait a little bit, and then begin your next layer. And that's true of working from dark to light, is I'm beginning with some of these darks, I'll let them dry a little bit, and then I can start to work my way towards some of these lighter values. Now you can see here that I'm speeding up the video just a little bit, but I'm continuing to block in. And I am hopping around and moving around the canvas and working in different areas. Just sort of focusing on these dark shapes that I see with these dark values. You're probably also noticing that, yeah, I am hopping around from sort of black to gray to a lighter gray to a darker gray. I do go back and forth just a little bit because again, painting is loose and expressive and it doesn't have to follow a specific recipe. So you can find what works best for you and you'll get into your own rhythm with your painting. As you work through the different shadows, working from dark to light, you may at times notice that you've covered up a portion with paint. And that's when I find it helpful to go back to the guide image and use the guide image in conjunction with the shadows on the canvas itself. And that way you can start to see the layers and how they're building up. It is entirely possible to complete a paint by shadows painting without using the guide image at all and simply painting just by the shadows on the canvas itself. Following the darks, the mediums, and the lights, you could block in your own color choices just as easily as using the guide image. The guide image is really helpful if you want your painting to look something like the original art. So that's really why this is such a great way to learn to paint or to experiment with your painting or to even just try something completely new. Uh, if you are an experienced painter, trying a subject or a style that maybe you typically don't do. So it's really up to you whether you want that guide image there or not. There will be times where I like to start with that guide image just to sort of get the feel for the painting and some of the initial colors and values that the artist used. But then I like to put it away toward the end so that I can finish it up and make it mine with the final details. Remember to switch back and forth between the different paint brushes just because they will produce different strokes because round brushes are really good for certain things and flats are really good for certain things. It's really good to experiment because you can use them differently. If you use them with just paint on the tip, you can get thinner lines and edges, whereas if you press down and pull, you can get wider strokes. So I highly recommend playing around with some different strokes with your paintbrushes on a separate piece of paper, you'll learn a lot by doing that. It can be a really good idea to practice mixing your colors and value before you begin painting. You could label your recipes so you can come back and make more of a color. And keep in mind to work in layers. Paint seems very transparent in the beginning, but as you build up the layers, you're going to build up the opacity. Plus, a lot of these paintings really cater to a sort of painterly style, meaning it looks really good when you see a little bit of overlap or a little bit of the previous color underneath popping through. When it comes to blending, oftentimes it's an illusion, meaning the paint is actually just layered and then when you step back from a distance and look at your painting up on the wall or have someone hold it up for you, it appears blended. 
But if you really do need to blend paint, because sometimes paint is really smooth, you want to make sure the colors that you're trying to blend together are both wet. Acrylic paint is only going to blend if both paints are wet. You can also attempt to sort of work in some wet paint over top of some dry paint. You're not going to get a super smooth blend, but you can almost get a look of one color sort of fading into another color, which can be a really cool technique to try. Keep in mind, if there's an area of your painting you don't like, acrylic paint dries very fast and you can simply paint over it. Just remember the saying that an acrylic painting is never bad, it's just unfinished. So keep going with it even if there's an area you don't like. You can always take a break and come back to it with fresh eyes. I also think it's a really good idea to step away from your painting. Remember, you're really up close to it when you're painting. So step back now and again, or have someone hold it up for you and look at it from a distance and you'll be amazed at what you've created. The end is where I'm using my small round brush and I'm putting in all those little pops of color, little details, little strokes. They're the finishing touches that really make your painting look finished and make it pop. Sometimes it's a little difficult to know when you're finished with a painting, but fortunately with Paint by Shadows, you have the guide image to assess yourself, and you can also just decide on your own. Take a step back and decide if you're satisfied with how everything looks. If not, you can always add a few finishing touches, and then you'll be finished. A great option for hanging your shadows canvases are the two stick frames by Chirkwood. There are instructions included that are simple to follow or you can go to the video on their website. But all you need to do is slide the canvas into the grooves on each of the two sticks. There are four little pin like clips that you put on each of the four sides and kind of twist them back into the grooves and your canvas is all set and ready to be hung on the wall. Remember you're going to learn a lot through the process of acrylic painting. The most important part though is to just relax and have a good time. Happy painting!